Chapter 31, Curiosity Traits of Very Best Adventures. Tilly was in the garden, but Alice was not. The garden was beautiful, though. Alice had been right about there. There was were red roses growing everywhere with ornate fountains dotted around bright flower beds. Tilly absentmindedly touched a rose and was alarmed to see that her fingers came away red. She thought she had pricked her finger until she realized that it was paint and that the roses were white underneath, a messy layer of red paint. Of course, she thought, I'm in the Queen of Hearts garden, and she started looking for Alice with more urgency. A small wooden door in a tree was suddenly flung open, and Tilly nearly fell over as a giant version of Alice's face appeared in the doorway. "'What are you doing in here, and why are you so big?' Tilly whispered. "'Oh, bother,' Alice said. "'I've ended up on the wrong side again. Hang on.' "'No,' Tilly shouted after her. "'I'll come through to you. I'm small enough to get through the door, and I don't fancy running into the Queen of Hearts by myself, not in the habit of, with her habit of chopping people's heads off. It was a bit of a squeeze to get through the door and the tree, but when Tilly did, she realized that she only came up to Alice's knee. Alice's pi Alice picked her up carefully and took her over to a huge three-legged table made of glass and placed her on top. There was a bottle with a paper label marked, Drink Me, and a tiny golden key, and Tilly felt as though she was experiencing deja vu. Alice was crouched down on the floor, looking for something. Aha, here it is, she said triumphantly, setting down a cake next to the bottle. The cake was marked Eat Me and Raisins. Now if I could just remember which way they are. I think maybe the cake is for growing and the drinks are for shrinking, Tilly said, seeing as how the cake was on the floor and the bottle is up here. Now that you say that, but things here can be rather topsy-turvy, so perhaps the opposite is true, Alice said, reaching for the bottle. No, 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 Tilly shouted. I definitely think you should just try a crumb of the cake first. And stop, Alice. Wait. You need to put me on the floor first with the bottle so we have all options available. Alice stared at her. You're ever so logical, she said in a pitying voice. No wonder you don't fit in here. Since when is it being logical a bad thing, Tilly said accusator accusingly. I mean, it means you don't get stuck at the wrong size constantly. Now, I know you must have a good imagination, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But it's hardly on display. Curiosity creates the very best adventures in my experience. That's why your mother used to say, isn't it? Yes, be brave, be curious, be kind, Tilly said. Well, exactly. She sounds like she knew what she was talking about. And with that, Alice placed Tilly down on the floor alongside the bottle and popped the whole cake into her mouth in one go. Within seconds, she had shrunk to the same size as Tilly. You better have that key, Tilly said. Alice opened her palm to reveal it shining in her hand. Alice grinned triumphantly. Shall we? They walked back to the tiny door in which Alice made a great song and dance about opening with a dramatic flourish, and they were back in the beautiful garden with its rose dripping with paint. Alice touched one gingerly, and her fingers came away red. I wonder why they've been painted, she said. They already looked so beautiful. It's because the Queen of Hearts garden, Tilly said. You must know that it's your story. It's the Queen's garden? Alice said in horror. I've heard the most monstrous thing about her. We must make sure she doesn't spot us. What? How do you? But Tilly was interrupted by three gardeners, all dressed as playing cards, manically dabbing at roses that had not yet been painted. Look out now, Five. Don't go splashing paint all over me like that. Oh, I couldn't help it, said the Five of Spades. Seven jogged my elbow. That's right, Five, grumbled the third gardener. Always lay the blame on others. The arguing went on for ages until Seven threw its paint brushes down, splattering bursts of red paint all over the grass and the other gardeners. He turned away from them, crossing his arms in sulk, and laid eyes on Tilly and Alice, watching them with mouth open. Would you tell me, please, asked Alice, why are you painting those roses? Why, the fact is, you see, miss, said the two of spades, this is here ought to have been a red rose tree, and we put a white one in by mistake, and if the queen was to find out, we should have all our heads cut off, you know. So, you see, miss, we're doing our best afore she comes to. 
but it was too late, and the garden f gardeners flung themselves to the ground as Tilly heard a great racket coming toward them. Let's go, Tilly hissed, putting Alice's hand. And they darted behind a bush before the royal parade came round to the corner. Tilly gasped as she saw a procession of playing cards followed by a great gog gaggle of people, a white rabbit wearing a waistcoat and a pocket watch, and then the king and queen of hearts themselves. They are both quite square-looking and dressed in incredibly ornate robes, like the Tudor king's queens from Tilly's history books at school. The king had some very elaborate facial hair, with a beard that ended in an extravagant curl on his chin. The queen had a gravity-defying hairstyle and was clutching a large gilt hand mirror, shaped like a heart. "'Please, can we go back to pages and company?' Tilly said, not liking the look of the queen at all. "'Hang on, hang on,' Alice said. "'I want to watch. I don't mind if you don't stay, though.' "'But how do I get back without you?' Tilly said desperately as the queen stalked over closer to them. "'Oh, I don't think you can, my darling,' said a new voice, and Tilly spun around to see a wide grin floating in the air right next to her ear.' 